I have about 32 feet of fence panels here. I probably need uh, 20 to 30 feet for the upper 40 inches of my walls. Good morning. I'm in Lakewood, Colorado today. I'll only be here just a couple more days in Colorado. Then I'm going to be moving on and continuing with my North American tour headed towards Portland, Oregon. I am totally sore this morning from yesterday. Yesterday I spent probably about three or four hours in the morning trying to get this work done before the rainstorm set in to pull apart the fence panels that I had to get these boards here. I have about 32 feet of fence panels here. I probably need uh, 20 to 30 feet for the upper 40 inches of my walls. Not going to do all of it, but the majority of it will be done with this wood. At least that's the plan. I'm working on putting the last of the denim insulation into the walls of the step van. That's the top 40 inches all the way from the front to the back over here. And I have furring strips that I've installed at 40 inches down, which is right here, and at the top up here. And the solution I came up with to do this solo is to tuck the denim insulation underneath the top up here. A few things about denim insulation because I keep getting these in the comments. So people keep talking about mold and mildew and things like that. My understanding from the documents that I've read, the uh, websites that review this, and not the people that are like slamming it, but like government reviews or uh, consumer reports and stuff like that, um, indicate that this does not mold and it doesn't uh, generate min mildew. The downside with the denim is that if it gets wet, it gets heavy, and that like fiberglass, it can sag over time. So one of the benefits of tucking it up here like this is it's sort of hanging here permanently so it's not just going to fall down over time. So I think that's a good solution. Uh, a couple other people were asking about uh, close-ups of the denim. Um, nice thing is you can touch it. It's basically like blue jeans that have been all just torn up and then maybe dampened with water or some sort of fluid to help it sort of stick together so you can see it's pliable. It's sort of like a thick blanket. Very very similar to a thick blanket really. And uh, I don't know, it's really easy to work with. You just tear it with your hands, which uh, is very similar to fiberglass as well, except for this you can touch. Home Depot sells this by the case. So inside of case, you get these uh, plastic bags with these strips of the denim insulation. You can't get this at Lowe's, unfortunately. I think you can probably buy it from a few other private contractors or directly from Ultra Touch, which is uh, the company that makes this. Um, anyway, the rating on this is about the same as fiberglass as far as insulation value. The difference is, of course, this is much more eco-friendly, and I think it's about double the cost. Um, I don't remember how many boxes of this I ordered, but I'm thinking I might not have ordered enough. I'll show you how to do one install here of one panel. So basically, I just stretch it down and shove it under here, under the board, all the way up until I get it up on the top where I want it, like about like that. And then I slide it over to where it's next to this one and there's no gap in between it and the previous one. And go down to the bottom and then I just sort of hold it against the side down at the wood on the bottom and you can just do tearing so I just tear it it doesn't really tear evenly and then I just tuck the bottom portion into my furring strip on the bottom and try to get it all lined up and into place and that looks good so you can see here on the top, it's just held in and then just sort of tucked in a little bit on the bottom and it'll lay flat right here in the center. I suppose I could probably put some tape in here to hold this together, but I really don't think it's gonna be necessary. So anyway, I uh, sort of like working with this. It's pretty good. I'm gonna use it on the walls and then uh, once I get to do the ceilings up here, I'm gonna do these with poly ISO 
Um, I would prefer using denim, but I think the poly is going to be easier to do the ceilings just with adhesive up here. And because I'm so sensitive to the height, I don't want to lose the height. Um, I want the maximum R value in the ceiling, whereas on the walls, I don't mind going in. I'm about uh, two inch and a half, two inches in on the walls, so uh, I don't mind losing that space on each side. But anyway, that's what I'm working on right now. I'm going to put the denim insulation all the way down the sides and then start add it, adding in the wood slats from the salvage fence that I have. I've started installing the uh, panels here and it's looking quite nice. I like the way this is looking. This is unstained, untreated. It just looks like, I guess, barn wood. It's a nice gray color, which I like a lot. And I think it matches my floors and the overall look I'm going for. Um, these boards are pretty clean and looking good. I'm just securing them with uh, one screw on the top and another screw on the bottom. And uh, it's, I like it a lot. The new wall is looking great. It's fabulous, coming along really quickly. A um, couple of comments I wanted to mention. I'm using a little jig to drill the holes so that they line up the same on all the boards as I'm doing it. So I drill it outside on my rear bumper and then bring it in and screw it into place. So it's pretty easy, it's uh, coming along. The only thing I have to watch for is there's sort of a creep because some of the boards are a little bit warped and they start getting slightly off so every two or three boards i use a carpenter square to sort of make things uh, square again so there's a little bit of gaps some places as i'm slightly adjusting but i like it overall i think that uh, the gaps give it a little bit more character uh, the other thing i was going to mention is about the electric um, the electric in this step band runs along the top of the ceiling up here and so as you're going front to back, it's going to be all up in the ceiling. I'm going to put the ceiling in last. So I'll run front to back through the ceiling. And then as I need to drop down, let's say to put an electrical outlet down here or to power something at the bottom, I can just pull out the one panel that I need with two screws and run the wire uh, down there. So I already have a basic diagram. I'm working with one of the viewers, a subscriber named Scott, not the same one that's the mechanic and so he's helping me with some of the components and assembling that and then i'm consulting with giuseppe as well um, who has quite a bit of knowledge and has been giving me some suggestions on uh, various things uh, based on my build but uh, basically so i'm not so worried about having the electric in exactly right now just because i can remove these as needed to put in components and none of the electric is going to go below 40 inches so it's just going to be in this top section and then I'll have plugs right here at 40 inches which will be above the seats or above countertops and accessible for uh, whatever use I need. I think my wall is looking absolutely fabulous and it's totally changing the acoustics inside of here and the echo factor. It just looks gorgeous. I love looking at it. I'm going to leave um, the space in the back at the foot of the bed. I'm going to build a cabinet there so I still need to do the other side. You'll notice up here that I have these uh, bright silver rivets. I'm not a big fan of copper or brass type colors, but I love silver and galvanized steel, uh, sort of the industrial look like this. So I like these, uh, I like these screws that I have up here. They look really awesome, I think. You can see it goes part way over. It goes to here. From here up until the front will be the kitchen cabinet area with the backsplash as I've mentioned before. So the wood panels go from here to the back corner. And then on the other side at the foot of the bed I've left a gap. So the wood panels go just to the beginning of the bed. And I'm going to put a uh, cabinet in there that's going to be for clothing and uh, items that I want to have close to the bed like uh, computer, power cables, um, stuff like that. And so I want to mount that and then I'll fill in the gap below that cabinet with uh, some wood paneling like the bottom, maybe foot or so. So anyway, I want to build that cabinet first and then I'll trim and put in the last little bit of the uh, salvage fence that I have here. And then I've got to figure out what I'm going to do for insulation on the back walls to the sides of the doors and the doors. And that will be the last step. Uh, I think that's all I'm going to do for today, but uh, it's looking pretty gorgeous. I'm super happy with the walls and the way it looks.
it's been a busy day. I think that's all I have for this episode. Went to Starbucks, a lot faster internet there than Becky's place. I uploaded another video. Thank you for watching, savor the moment, see you next episode.